In the last tutorial, I said that a song is a collection of the spots on the grid placed in order. If you look here, you can see count in, jazz basic, jazz cymbal, jazz crash, seven and eight are open, and so on. And then when we go to the pattern page where we normally work on our patterns, it looks exactly the same. I'm going to be constantly reminding you about how important it is for you to choose a blank space so you don't cover up a pattern that you've already placed in your song. So let's pick this empty spot. Now, where are the patterns? You can find them by clicking the load button here. This brings up the pattern library. The pattern library is where your complete collection of patterns lives. That's all the patterns that came with the app, your in-app purchases, and everything you put in or create. Everything you will put on the grid, you will find here in folders that either the app creates or you create yourself. No matter what mistakes you can make on the grid, you're not going to lose your patterns as long as you've saved them at one point or another they will still be here while i'm here i can audition patterns these are all the patterns that i can consider to put on the grid like i said you can have tons of patterns here but you can only use up to 64 at a time in your song but an important thing you need to know is that there is no load button here there's just a close button. Whatever pattern you are listening to last is going to turn up in the space you chose before you entered the pattern library. So I'm on this particular pattern right now. I close out and there it is. I could go back and load a different one and I'll get that one. I can hit undo and I'll go back to what was there in that place before. If you do find yourself in the pattern library and don't remember what square you were on, you can just close out immediately and there'll be no harm done. It'll be whatever was there before. Okay, now I'm gonna make a new pattern so I can save it. I'm going to take this pattern I made called Jazz Basic and I'm going to select it and copy it by touching the copy button here. And then I'm going to go to this empty spot and I'm going to push the paste button. You can see that Drum Perfect assigns names temporarily. I could save that by hitting the save button, but I want to give it a new name. In order to do that, I'm going to touch the save as button. It then asks me to enter the name of the pattern. So I'm going to call it test one. There's a category button to the right. It's important that you not ignore that. When you push that, it brings up the pattern library. I could choose any folder, but I'm going to choose the one with my name on it. Notice that I put two zeros on the front of the name so it appears at the top. So I'm going to close out by pushing the close button. So let's click the load button and see if the pattern I just saved is there. And there it is in my folder. What if you want to make your own folder? Let me save my test one file again. And it asks me to save a category. I type a new one in. So how about AUM? Everybody likes AUM. After I've done that and hit close, it's going to check with me one more time if that's the name of the file I want to use. And it's not. I actually want to call it Aum. And when I close out, I see that I've replaced my original test one pattern with new one that's called Aum. It's the same pattern, it's just placed in a different folder. Now that might have been a new pattern, I might not have wanted to do that but I can just hit undo and all is well. In the pattern library, you can see that there are a few buttons, two sliders, and a search filter. I will talk about these in the next tutorial, which is about managing your patterns.